Hey, let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ward, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. You can reach Tim, folks, every trading day. It's a great newsletter at Ord, O R D Oracle.com. That's Ord Oracle.com. Tim Ord, what a market. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Yeah. Yourself? Well, good, good. Uh, I got a couple of charts. We're kind of walked through it. Everybody's kind of uh, worried about the uh, gold market, so we're actually going to take a pretty big view on it so okay you know we we can start chart one okay we've showed this a number of times um the top window is the rsi for the uh, bullish percent index for the gold miners slash gdx ratio right and every time uh the rsi of of uh, that ratio got below 30 and closed above 30 a majority of the time the bottom was in that just happened here probably uh in well, sept, uh, probably early September. Don't have the exact date, but uh, anyhow, all the blue lines there across the chart shows the time that signal was generated. So let's look at the bigger chart of that same chart. This chart goes back uh, to uh, chart number two. Okay, goes back all all the way back to uh, 2008, about mid 2008. Yes, and that's uh, it's kind of a rare signal. But the blue line, sh uh, anyhow, that type of signal where the RSI dropped below 30 and closed above 30, I took it all the way back to 2008. And all the blue lines there, uh, horizontal blue lines, are times that signal was generated, and there's, uh, which was 18 times. And there's two red uh, uh, lines there that the signal failed. So if you do that number, uh, you work out 80% or 89% success rate. Yeah, pretty good. So, yeah. yeah, so the odds of this making a low uh, in this vicinity, because this doesn't actually pick up the exact low, but does pick up the vicinity of a low, is 89%. So you really don't really want to be bearish here. Uh, again, the other two times was coming off the 2011 major top, uh, so that didn't give a signal. Then 2016, that was going off of a ballistic upward rally. I remember that rally just went right through the ceiling. Right. Uh, then, it, then it failed. But since then, 2016, all those signals have been successful. So I flipped uh, to a little another chart here and show, we, uh, show where we are in, on a short-term basis. Is that the third and chart? Again, yeah. Yeah, the third chart. Okay, cool. And uh, uh, the bottom window is the 62-day 62 62 average of the uh, up-down volume percent for GDX. So it measures the up-down volume of all the stocks in GDX, which is, I think is around 30 or 32 of them. And so when it gets above zero, that's the blue shaded area, is when those rallies start. And sometimes they kind of hover around. If you look at uh, 2019, right smack that January high, it kind of fumbled around that zero line before the rally actually got, uh, got going. And it's kind of common, but once it gets around zero, it usually stays there. It usually doesn't go up and eject and go back down. It usually hovers around that zero line, which is what we've kind of been doing. And we got above that zero line last week. Now we're a little bit below it. We're approximately about minus two right now. And I think got up about plus five last week. So we're hanging around that zero line. And this is a... A 62-day average, so it's like three months. Three of months, data. yep. Uh, so, and also, I want to point out this chart. Uh, when it gets down below minus 20, which it did back in July of 2000, or it looks like maybe September of 2021, got down below minus 20 again in looks like about July 2022, and again in July 2023. The market flipped sideways for uh, for several months. Uh, in 2021, it went sideways for approximately six months. In 2022, it went sideways for four months. Currently, we've been going sideways for about three months. So, in my opinion, we're still looking at a low here. I think the market, because it's down so hard, is affecting pretty much all the markets. So I don't think this is a big decline. I still think we're probably in a basing period. 
And there's a good chance we could possibly base for maybe another month and be similar to the previous times when this indicator hit below minus 20. You flip sideways for several months, and maybe that's what's going on here. But I don't think the market's set up now for a decline from here. Uh, yeah, and if we, if we other, stay down here for yeah, another yeah. month in the gold market, no one's ever going to buy any stocks. And that's exactly what you need for a market to go higher. Right. Interesting. Right. Yeah. Right. You really, you really want you know sentiment and everything really be through the floor. You want people to actually hate the word gold stock. You They're certainly say, not making it easy. Market. That's you right. Really, They're not, not making it easy right market. now. I can tell you. You know, you know, it's interesting though, Tim. They are actually they they are stronger than the gold contract still. I mean. It, you know, it's interesting. A, f a few of these are actually pretty strong. You know, well, I mean, they've they've backed down, but you know, if you look at like an Eco Eagle, it's like, okay, man, it's back down, but not much, man. You know, so there's a few of them, even Newmont. You know, there's a few that just haven't backed down, which is pretty positive. You know, so. Well, I think the major bottom again. Back to this chart here. I, uh, I have some other charts that gave it the uh, a long term buy signal last July. And we, which is July of 2022. Yeah. And if you look where we are last July compared to where we are right now, to me, this is just a sideways consolidation right. that's been going on since April. Right. And, and I think that's all it is. I don't think we're going to go down all the way. You know, I'm, I'm thinking still in general, I think we're going to move sideways around this, you know, 2830 area to a 2730 area. And I think that's pretty much it. So. Yeah. See, if you um, look at this, I'm going to put this up for the you know, listeners right now. So this is pretty intense because what does happen, you got to remember, folks, okay, that, you know, Tim and I, you know, are both big, you know, Wyckoff people also. And this deal, the longer that you build a cause here, the bottom line, the higher you can go. And you know what's interesting, Tim, is that, you know, I get this on a monthly right now, right, going all the way back to uh, 2022. And on the monthly, check this out. This is pretty intense, man, actually. On the monthly, I won't take this month, but, uh, well, even if I did, you know, we went up on that September with uh, 182 million shares in the GDX. And, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's going down right now at 29 million. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that bar yeah. is huge, man. The bar that it's going into, which is that November bar of 2021. You know, that's when the GDX went from the 24 to... 28 and then that, that basically threw it into a consolidation so there's no doubt that's going to be intriguing so right yeah. and volume is, is basically like gas or not gas it's like energy right or gas for a car right and uh so if you get volume going up and, and virtually less volume going down the bigger trend is up right uh, so I, I don't have a volume chart here but i do have up and down volume uh, which kind of works in a similar way. It's a little bit different way to look at volume, but it, it works uh, pretty well. So it, it measures basically the up volume compared to the down volume, that bottom chart on uh, yes. on chart three. Uh, the bottom window on chart three, it measures the up volume compared to the down volume. So and if you notice, uh, you know, we had a washout move, of minus 20, and that's pretty much the exhaust move to the downside. So, stay right there, um, folks. Tim we, and I are going to be coming. here for another month, though, so I don't know. I'll, nope. I'll stay here. Stay there. So. Tim and I are coming right back. You can get hold of Tim, folks, at ord, ord-oracle.com. Tim and I are coming right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Ord, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. Okay, Tim, where, where would you like to go next? Yes, let's go to number uh, chart four. Okay. Uh, this is a seven indicator. And uh, the, the bottom window is the CBOE uh, equity put call ratio reading with the 21-day average. And the next higher window from the bottom, the second window up from the bottom, is the CBOE uh, equity put call ratio readings uh, with the five-day average. And the chart goes back to about well, mid-2014. And the red lines or the pink areas show the times when this ratio is above uh, well, a certain level, actually a bullish level. So this is kind of a, it measures how many uh, puts to calls there is. In, yes. in other words, in up markets, people buy more calls than puts. In down markets, people buy more puts than calls. So this measures on a five-day and, and a 21-day average. So when it gets up uh, into bullish territory, which we are right now, we actually have been for about the last uh, several weeks, is usually getting close to a low. This really doesn't pick out 
the bottom per day or bottom the day of the bottom or anything like that. It gets you in the vicinity of a low. Okay. And so, uh, so, and it, it could be a little off, but in general, it's usually pretty good. When everybody hits, hits the sell button, th- these indicators jump up and it gives you a good clue that uh, a bottom's coming up. So, and we're in that bullish range right now on a three week and actually on a, on a one week uh, time frame. So, uh, ha- uh it actually has a great history. So, uh, in my opinion, this is not a bear market. We're probably going into a low. Uh, you know, could it be another week or two, maybe? But we're, we're bang, according to the put call ratio readings, it's kind of a seminary here. We're probably getting close. So now it's flipped to, on a shorter term basis, it's flipped to five. Okay. Chart number five. There we go. And this is my kind of bread and butter of uh, panic because it works pretty well. The trend uh, is actually measures the uh, advanced decline and also measures up down volume, and it puts it in all in one number. Uh, when the number is one, everything's kind of neutral. There's there's just as much up volume as down volume, and it's just as much as advanced as there is decline. So it doesn't really say much. But when that indicator gets above one point or around one point two and higher, the volume's starting to hit the declining stocks, and that's when that number jumps up. So it, it measures kind of the selling against declining stocks, and it goes the other way, too. It measures also uh, when it gets down below 0.8, it, it tells you that uh, most buying is going on on the up stock. Everyone's buying the same stocks. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, so it kind of, so it's a good indicator uh, to look. Anyhow, the, the, the bottom window is the five-day average of the arms index or trend index. Next to the one up is the 10-day. The 10-day is usually the better one. That's two weeks of data. And the, the pink areas there show the times when this indicator got in bullish territory. And uh, so basically all, you know, we went over this chart before, but from May of 2022 until basically April of 2023, the market built a base. And if you can see, which is that kind of a side blue area, I kind of boxed in blue there. Yes. Uh, and it was uh, 365 to 390 was support because that's where the trend on a five day and a 21 day we're reaching panic levels. So okay. that's building a base. Panic happens at bottoms. And that's where that base was. So now we flip over to the current time frame. And neither the five day or the ten day have reached bullish uh, readings yet. Uh, the ten day needs to get up to around one point two, and the five day needs to get up around one point five. And so, ideally, what we want the market to do right now to get those two five and ten day trends up around into the bullish territory, really showing panic, you need kind of a washout move in the market. You want the trend. Preferably close up around two or three, which would be ideal. Now, Tim, do, do you do you you're going into a war shop move? Tim, do you use the, do you use a closing trend or using the intraday high trend? No, you would use the close. Close, okay, uh, which makes a huge difference yeah, because, wanna, like you know, yeah, yes, yesterday we had a point six six, so that kills everything, right? It's interesting. And, yeah, it kills everything. Yeah, and on right. a close, it closed at point seven three. Yeah, right. So, yeah, there's right. a lot of bomb pickers there, evidently. And we had, a, no, you know, you today, it, what happened here, folks, is that today you had a high of 1.45, but yet you're only at 1.09 right now. So, yeah, it's, that's, they're buying too quick. Interesting. Yeah, man. they're buying too quick. So, yep. so you, you really want, you know, when the big, what I call the puke happens, those trends just explode. Right. And when those trends explode, you know, actually explosions probably on a one-day basis, anything above two. You know, they're they're hitting the sell button. Everybody, you hear it on news, and that's when you you look because your your days or not days, you're you're probably hours away from below. In other words, hours could be a, a day or two. Yeah, but it's not like a month or two or a week or two. You're counting the days so that bottom's going to occur. So once you start seeing rings, you know, preferably up around two, even three. You know, you're looking a day or two away, probably for a meaningful low, and that's it gets pretty good. I, uh, picked out bottoms a day of the bottoms of, on this before. Nice, you know, but it, they're tough. Yeah, no, <laughs> there's no, there's no, there's, yeah. there, there's no. There's no audience there, 
and everybody's kind of laughing at you. Right. Uh, no, the, it, I can the, see the, that. The, yeah, because it's like, what's yeah, going to make it turn around? I mean, everything's going down. You know, the Vi the VIX has quite a jump out here today too, Tim. The Tim, yeah. the VIX up two fifty three. We're trading at nineteen forty three. So, I mean, the last time, you know, in one week, it's already gone from what? Uh, yeah, it's gone from twelve fifty seven. Yeah, no, thirteen fifty seven. Yeah, and, and, and that was yeah, it was kind of unusual. You know, everything uh, kind of acts different in kind of different markets. You know, that yeah. trend stayed low even on uh, that top we had in August. It kind of just stayed low, which is kind of rare. But now we're getting the uh, the trend finally, you know, approaching twenty and higher, and so that's helping too. He gets in the twenties and even uh, very seldom gets to thirty, but it, it does get thirty every once in a while on a kind of a washout low. So this is kind of lining up. My bet is uh, the bottom, I think, is going to be this week. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, prove me wrong, you know, and but uh, Thursday, uh, you know, well, well, today's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You know, I'm thinking of Thursday or Friday, you know, uh, you know, the market may attempt to rally maybe tomorrow try for a bounce, and if it doesn't, I bet we get a washout move going into this weekend. So we'll see. No, you can uh, think, I can see that. I've been seeing enough of these when they start momentum to the downside, it usually doesn't quit. Right. Until you get real climatic. Right, so, right. There's no, there's, uh, yeah. You know, you had the the spies had broken its swing point, you know, you know, the middle of last week. Now the Qs only broke the swing point today. And the Qs have quite a way to go to where... You know, like if we're talking about where they all broke out from, do you know what I mean? So the spy's almost there. The spy's only like, uh, you know, another six points away from, you know, the 420, 418 area. Do you know what I mean? Where, where the Qs, you know, is playing catch up here. So there's, there's no doubt it's yeah. going to get interesting here, man. Yeah, I, I thought we, you know, I didn't actually think we'd get down. We, You talked about this, too. I thought, well, maybe we'll find support around this 430 area. But, you know, the, the real support's down around that 420. Yeah. And when these, when the market gets to support area, that's usually where all the panic really occurs. So we're a little bit away from it. But I bet we hit it. I bet that trend until it explodes. Well, listen, Tim, so. it's always a pleasure. We we'll look forward to having you on Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you get hold of Tim. He has a great newsletter at ord, ord oracle.com. Have a great one, Tim. Have right. a safe one.